Hey, comic book collectors. Do you want to protect what you collect? Do you hate when your comic books slide around in your short box or you need to turn them sideways just so they don't bend or fall over? Well, look no further than Sidekick Supplies. Their product fits firmly inside your comic box so you don't need to worry. And not only is their product made in the USA, but also ships free directly to your doorstop. Check out our sponsor, Sidekick Supplies at SidekickSupplies.com and use the code COMICOM15 for 15% off your purchase. Believe me, you'll be ordering more than one. Welcome to the one and only Comic-Con podcast, your podcast for comic book news, reviews, and comic community drama with your hosts, Nemesis Prime and Milton the Man. Are you listening? All right, we're going to do this. What's up, YouTube nights? It is uh, the Comic-Con Podcast Season 4, Episode 22, Nemesis Prime and Milton the Manimal here. And typically, Milton the Manimal is in another world, another state, recording, because that's usually what he does. <laughs> yeah, so, on the road on the road again. Yeah, so, um, you know, this is it, it's, it's even tough to talk about. Jesus Christ. Um, we're going to get right into it. So, community... Um, I'm sure people have been seeing it on Instagram. If you haven't, um, I'm sure somebody's posted it or you'll find out at some point, especially after listening to this. So um, friend of the channel, Zach and I have been on this YouTube channel for God. It's been, it was a while. Um, yeah. About kinda, seven years. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was my second iteration into YouTube. It was wild. But uh, for the people that don't know, Tim TiVo um, passed away. Uh, late Tuesday evening after the Lords of the Long Box cover price top 10 show. Um, you know, we don't really want to get into details, but um, let's just do a moment of silence for our, our friend Tim. All right, everybody. Uh, again, you know, this is not going to be a downer episode. I want to make sure that he is loved and Holden in this community, he is some one of the OGs of YouTube, one of the OGs of Instagram. Um, you know, briefly, I'm, I'm just, I, you know, I'm not going to speak too much on it. Um, Zach's, you know, kind of, you know, we're definitely going to do something. The, the, all the lords have been talking um, through Instagram, Facebook, stuff like that. So we're going to definitely do something on the channel to help and assist, you know, whether it's donations, fundraiser, auction, something like that. But, you know, uh, fun you know things with tim man it was just it was wild you know and I, I appreciated tim for allowing me to come on youtube because i was on three men in a basement and it was a channel that you know it was different like three men was the showing your halls like hanging out beers and then you know they asked me to come on and help out one night and we were talking comics kind of kind of like what you and i do now like that's yeah. how that's what lords used to be before it was cover price before it was like the spec stuff. It was just cool. Like articles talking about comic books. And we all like yeah. went around the round table and just talked about like whatever that article was. Um, and then the, it grew and, you know, stuck with the channel. I got it. I got on to be like a weekly member and, uh, you know, my time with Lords, it was great, you know, with Otto, dark side Jedi, and then you coming on and, you know, Laura and JB and, and Gabe and, and everybody else. It's, you know, there's been so many iterations of the Lords, but it was always a channel that continued no matter what was going on. So, um, you know, I, I'll kind of real quick. I just, before you, you say something and, and yeah. I, and I put this out to my friends today. I actually texted my friends who I'm getting choked up. Uh, I texted my friends today and I was like, yo, you know what guys? I was like, I lost someone that I literally talked to on a weekly basis, a YouTube person that I've known for years. And I, the guy lived in California and I never saw him. But you guys, I live like so close to my friends. I'm still like in a big group chat with my high school friends. We all live within 20 minutes of each other. And I know we have families and stuff like that. But I was like, I challenge you guys that we really need to get together because it has been a while. It's been like over six months that we've all been together. And I found out recently that my one friend was in the hospital for three weeks and didn't tell anybody. And like, I only found out because I went to his house the week before, literally last week when I went right before I went to D.C., like he told me about it and I was like, dude, what the fuck? Like, why didn't you call us or say something? Like we would have came like, you know, and you just don't know. Right. Like, and yeah. I would, it was, just, it's just so wild. So, um, I mean, that's, that's all I'm going to say on it. You know, again, he's been an, a, he was an amazing part of the community. I thank him for giving me the opportunity to be on YouTube and stuff like that. So, um, Zach, you know, what do you got? Yeah, man. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been a tough two days. Uh, 
I mean, you, I got off the airplane from a tech and saw a text from you and I kind of knew something wasn't good. This isn't, wasn't, wasn't what I expected when I talked to you to hear from you, but, um, yeah, it's rough, man. Uh, Tim was probably the first, I mean, when I kind of got started in like the, the comic book community in terms of social media and everything, obviously, uh, I started with the, with gem Mint collectibles and, Tim was kind of probably the first, like you said, OG person that I like interacted with. You know, we did a, remember one of the first shows we did on, on the channel was like a, a discussion about Annihilation, like the Annihilation book. And that was kind of when I really got to know Tim. And then we just kept chatting over and over again. We had our own side conversations a lot. And then um, when everything that happened between Jem and I happened, I was going to walk away kind of from the, the community in terms of like the social media aspect and just go back to what I was before, which was just a solo reader and enjoyer of comic books. Um, and Tim really was the one who convinced me to stay and gave me a home on Lords of the Long Box. And it took some, uh, <laughs> it took some wheedling from him to convince me to, to kind of come back and do something. And it had it, been a little while. Like I decided I need a break for a bit, but Tim kept after it and kept bugging me and uh, said, come on Lords, do, do the Lords show with us and be on there full time. And, you know, I did. Uh, honestly, I can say the Comic-Con podcast would not exist without TiVo because I knew you like mm. through the YouTube community, but like you and I, we weren't really communicating at that time in terms of like talking a lot. And it wasn't, it was kind of through Lords that you and I start to get to know each other and kind of hit it off and realize we had a lot of in common in terms of interests and stuff. And, and we had branched off with at that point through the Lords and stuff and us talking and becoming good friends was when we started having conversations about doing the podcast. Um, so yeah, definitely without Tim, there'd be no comic con podcast. Um, there'd yeah. be no, you and I kind of, linking up to do our thing um tim was one of our first guests also like definitely first guests of like the community that we had on um, yeah early seasons yeah yeah with, so, with the movie review on dr strange we were like yeah we gotta get you on here you get you everything. Right. yeah the dr strange fanatic um so yeah dude this is a tough one um like justin said you know you never know what's gonna happen you never know how much time you have left in 50 is too young to lose someone. Um, this is tough. This is, this is a tough one. Um, but you know, much love to Tim, to everything he did for the community, whether it was, you know, appreciated, honestly, most of these people who are out here wouldn't be out here without people like Tim. Tim was a trailblazer for sure. in the YouTube comic book community, Instagram, social media, um, like you said, one of the OGs and, he blazed the trails and kind of opened it up and made it available for people to the big names to break out. Um, yeah. Stuck with it, man. He's like one it. of the, you know, we've, we said this, I, I can't remember if we said this on the channel, but like the people that started and they stop, you know, for whatever reason they get burnt out. You know, a lot of people came on in that COVID era, but I'm shit, man. He was been, he's been doing this for, Going on like yeah. 10 years, it was. It's and been wild. complaining for the past four years. I'm like, how <laughs> yeah, he was like, like, I'm gonna quit. I'm gonna quit. I'm gonna quit every year. There was a new milestone. I'm gonna quit. When we hit X subs, I'm quitting. Uh when it's the end of this year, I'm quitting. Yeah. Uh, you know, every year he was quitting, he had a new milestone, but he never did. And I think at some point we all knew, like, this dude's never gonna quit, bro. <laughs> like, this is all bullshit. Like, okay, Tim, okay. Yeah, yeah. We'll yeah. see you next week, dog. We'll see you next week <laughs> and next year for sure. Um yeah. But yeah, so, you know, like Justin said, um, you know, we don't, out of respect for the family, we're not going to go into like details about, you know, things that happen. And of course, we don't know a ton of the details, but um, something will be forthcoming. We will do something large on the Lords of the Long Box channel as it should be done and uh, to honor Tim and just continue to honor him and, you know, keep digging through them long boxes, like Tim used to say. Hell yeah, man. I still wear that shirt. I still get at, you know, people say that's an awesome shirt and what's awesome great sweatshirt name. too. Remember how he always, and he wasn't wrong. Oh, it's the softest sweatshirt. 
You're an asshole. You always just said soft. Oh, soft it's shit. great, man. It's, I literally have. I still have the red one, the black one. I got yeah. them all, man. I still wear yeah. them whenever the down blue here. The red, man. So, um, all right. So again, you know, for if you see our posts, you know, comment. You know, you could comment what your favorite time with Tim was, whatever. But you know, again, Lords will be doing something. Old Lords, current Lords. You know, you'll see some people that are just going to come out of the woodwork for this thing because he was a big community member and yeah yeah it's gonna be crazy so um let's kind of move on let's kind of talk you know comic books so sticking in the community stuff we got some questions to answer tonight uh let's first kick it off with a, a fight who wants to fight so mike the beast benson asked us who would win in a fight dc's doomsday or solomon grundy i'm gonna leave I, this uh, the dc guy yeah i like see i like this one i like that he went dc so i definitely enjoy this one you know for me you know i gotta go doomsday as like Cool as Solomon Grundy is on, on the undead, like there's nobody other than Superman that's beating Doomsday. So <laughs> like Doomsday is just a savage, you know, and we've seen that in um, if you've read, you know, obviously, Death of Superman, then like the return. And then you have him in like the Michael Turner stuff, like when they create the other Doomsdays and uh, there's the Doomsday Reign, which was like just prior to DC New 52, which is pretty crazy. And. You know, we've seen some stuff come out from Doomsday. So, yeah, I am going to 100% pick Doomsday because he is just a badass character. And they didn't do my boy justice in the Superman movie, but we've seen a lot of animated stuff. And he's been, you know, top notch in that. And that's the way he should be super violent. So I'm going with Doomsday. What about you? You want to pick anything or stick a stay uh, away from the question? I mean, I guess, yeah, I, I would say Doomsday. I mean, based on my moderate knowledge of D uh, DC. Mm -hmm. I mean, DC it, Doomsday killed Superman. I know Grundy never did that shit. So, um, yeah, I, it feels like it'd be Doomsday. It feels like it'd be Doomsday. Hmm. Uh, next up, we have our buddy Paperweight Collects. He goes, "Do you guys squeeze as many books into your long boxes <laughs> or short boxes, or leave some breathing room for them?" Well, Paperweight, I'm glad you actually asked us that question because if you do have breathing room, you can check out our sponsor, Sidekick Supplies, who has the Sidekick accessory for your long and short boxes so you don't have to worry about stuff like that and i try not to i try to leave a good amount of breathing room i mean squishing books in is what damages yeah. your books especially over time if you're in a short box or a long box and they're books that you don't touch for a very long time squishing them ruins the spine that's how things happen and people are like well i bought this book it was brand new it should be a nine eight yeah but if you have it squeezed up with a ton of books behind it and a ton of books in front of it that's not good for it so I do absolutely leave tons of breathing room in those like BCW boxes, which are longer now compared to the old like short boxes or even the, I, I get away from long boxes too heavy. Can't, can't deal with that as you get older. <laughs> what about you, man? I mean, it all, I mean, for sure. hundred percent agree with you for sure. Uh, try to leave some room and it really is all going to depend on what my box situation looks like. I, do I have another empty box that I can fill up or am I like really stacked with like space at the moment but i mean for sure you shouldn't be filling them up too much i like a little bit i like just you know what is it you can fit something like you know i always google this because i always forget i think something says like what 200 to like 250 in a long box or something and that's you know with bags and boards included i've never actually done the math and counted it um but there's always a little, I like a little bit of room because the other thing is too, when I'm like looking through them, I need a little bit of room to see, you want to see what the book is, right? I don't yeah. have to be like, oh, pull every single damn book out. So if I had my druthers, I'd say seven eighths of the, of the long box fill and like a, a good eighth empty so that you got some like breathing room, but you know, space is space, man. You got to get that space sometimes. Yeah, I can't. That's my biggest pet peeve when I go to like a show or a con and I'm going through someone's boxes and it's literally so tight. You gotta you pull everyone out. Yeah, you got to pull out like 20 books just to look through that. Like, yeah. I, it's just it ruins it ruins their books. And, you know, yeah. like, just don't bring. Hey, just like leave some out, like leave these like maybe if you bring 10 long boxes or whatever. Just leave 100 books out like yeah. probably not going to sell anyway, maybe. Uh, <laughs> So it's like, whatever, like just leave a little room for people to breathe. And they're, yeah. I guess they assume that they pack it so tight by the end of the show or by the end of like a three day show, there's going to be room. So maybe, you know, on that second day or later in that first day, there's room. So it, the can room, you know, can move, but I just think, you know, that's way too much stuff. So, but great question, man. I, I, I like yeah. the questions. Appreciate it guys. 
Um, so let's kind of get into out of the community. Uh, let's kind of talk about some comic books because we didn't talk about comic books last week because we did nothing but reviews last week. Um, so we kind of have like almost like two weeks of stuff, but I don't know if we're going to get to every book. I, I have a whole list here of books that I read and it's, it's a lot of stuff. So um, why don't you kick us off with what you read? Because I know at least you got to read some books last week and now this week you're kind of like, yeah, um, I don't know if I really have. I'm going to go ahead and skip last week. Um, okay. Let's move on to this week. Cause there was a, there was a lot of good stuff that came out this week. Um, I don't even know what order I'm going to go in here, but we had, oh, okay. I'll start with some culminations of things like endings things. So we had Avengers twilight ended, which actually was kind of surprised. I thought initially it was going to be a, uh, like a 12 issue. Yeah. Series. See, like Max it what, ended up yeah. being six. Right. So um, I don't know if they decided, eh, you know what, let's just, let's just end it or, or whatever. But um, I liked it. I very much enjoyed it, you know, from the beginning to the end, I thought it, it read good. I don't think there was anything spectacular about it. I think if you would have said, hey, man, it's going to be a six issue series, what do you how do you think it'll go? I probably could have, you know, guessed it how this this issue, this title was going to go, you know, like mm -hmm. uh, Cap comes back, you know, Iron Man, some of them come back. There's a Avenger. I, I knew from issue one that Wasp was going to come back at some point the i didn't see that coming did not see oh, that coming so like I, I knew i was like ah, okay there's no confirmation about her death like she's coming back to um because you're gonna play the father son or father mother you know dynamic mm -hmm. the, the hulk thing kind of definitely surprised me um but yeah i mean i didn't think there was anything like you'll never hear me say oh it was like one of the best written things of this year but um very cool enjoyed it loved the, all the alex ross covers as well beautiful covers um Really good. Um, next up, you had the ending to Fall of X, like the main series. You had Rise of the Powers of X ended this week. So I don't know how much I want to spoil really here, but we definitely, with the end of I think last, I think it was last week, you had Fall of the House of X, like the, the last issue of that run as well. And that kind of like gave us, definitely kind of retconned some origins with Hope and the Phoenix and Jean Grey and kind of rounded that all out. We saw the fall of the Enigma Dominion, which if you've been reading it, you know, is the original Mr. Sinister Dominion. Um, we kind of saw some redemption for Moira McTaggart and the fall of Xavier. We've been witnessing for quite a while now, but I really liked it. I thought it was cool how it all wrapped up. Um, I liked the way the tone it was set in, you know, um, for the most part, I really enjoyed this fall of X, fall, fall of House of X type stuff. So really good. Um, since we're kind of on the X-Men. Oh, before topic, you move on, I, I have a question. Do you think yeah. that this fall of House of X number five with the with the Jean Grey stuff sets up her ongoing? Like, Oh, yeah, for sure. So, yes, 100 percent. So she actually is going to go into space. I mean, it doesn't really like say why she's going into space. Like mm -hmm. it's not setting up like her journey through space like we read about. But it's putting her in the position where she is who she is now. Like it, it kind of just explains a lot about Jean and Phoenix force. Yes. So, yeah. That's yeah. what I got. From um, it okay. We also had Wolverine issue 50, which I'm sure you, you, you kind of were saving for me to talk about, which I mean, we were talking about the saber tooth war for like <laughs> how awesome it was. And it, it was awesome, but I kind of yeah. was a little like eh, a little lackluster at the end. Um, wasn't as like boom, like well, give me like an epic, epic ending here. Honestly, I, I mean, come like on, man, he got cut into pieces. <laughs> True, but like, like he's been beheaded before. Like Wolverine chopped his head off once before, and he oh, died. Of course, yeah, we've seen like covers where his heads off and Wolverine yeah. holding it. So uh, yes, it was really cool. It was cool stuff. Um, I the adamantium armor kind of ended up being like just kind of a waste of time in a little bit. Yeah, but. I like that it recharged his power. So, you know, that was one thing where I was like, well, what are we doing? We're going into the next age and what Wolverine's going to be depowered. Like, come on, man. Yep. Um, so I'm good. He's back to normal, but it was good. I enjoyed it. Uh, you know, a good saber tooth Wolverine battle we haven't had for quite a while. So this, this run was awesome. Benjamin Percy is amazing. Um, it was a perfect arc to end a series, right? Like sometimes yeah. you get to like the end of a, a series that's going to just randomly end on, I don't know, whatever issue it is, like 30 right. or 34. And that last story arc, it's just like, eh, whatever. It just, does it wrap up stuff? Yes, no. But this was a great story to wrap yeah. up the last 10 Agreed. issues. And then um, 
just a couple couple more before well after so a, a couple more and then i'll let you go and then we should mm-hmm. talk about like we're, like we've been doing every week talk about the blood hunt issues so um a couple more uh what was i looking at so oh okay so same thing with wolverine i, I enjoyed and i wasn't sure i th- kind of thought it was going to be cheesy but the helverine issue helverine okay. number one came out um it's already been spoiled kind of who helverine is um but it's cool because it's tied into Sabretooth War. Obviously, we saw Dakin get destroyed in Sabretooth War, and he's back as the Helverine. Um, really cool stuff. Love the tie-in with, like, Ghost Rider. Obviously, it's Benjamin Percy as well. Um, Mephisto, you know, everything supernatural. <laughs> yeah. So it actually was re- – honestly, I was pleasantly surprised. I thought it was going to be really cheesy. thought it was going to have kind of, like, a more comedic story because of this idea of, like, this playoff character of Helverine – whatever, you know, it was actually really serious and I really enjoyed it. I'm actually looking forward to seeing like where it's going to go. The project hellfire stuff I think is really interesting as well. Um, so surprise, surprise with the Helverine, pleasantly surprised. Mm-hmm. And then finally my, uh, I guess like hot garbage of the week, Ooh. dude, the, uh, and I'm, I'm sure you probably didn't read this one, but the X-Men wedding special was, Oh yeah. I skipped it. Unfortunately. Just Wait. dumb. And honestly, like, it just feels, it feels like it's just pandering. It's just pandering, pandering. And I cannot talk. I, I mean, I could talk a whole hour long about how much I hate this whole relationship between Betsy Braddock and Rachel Summers. I think it makes no sense. I've talked about it before. I think it's pandering. I think it's so stupid. And I'm so like not looking forward to that aspect of i think it's the x-force title with them both in it it's just garbage um (laughs) i can't stand it i feel like they ruined betsy braddock like i'm done with betsy screw her all psylocke baby bring in uh revanche psylocke that quanin is the only one that's the only psylocke for me moving forward like captain britain Mm -hmm. could pound sand for all i care um but yeah so garbage thought it was dumb lame and uh pandering that's all i gotta say about that so anyway what'd you think what you got uh pick of the week what's your what was your pick of the week anything oh what was my pick of the week i don't know i liked all, all those right. books no okay real pick. uh well since you took literally one two three four <laughs> i don't know five books from me I'll, i sleep I'll, all x i figured you wouldn't really i know about. i know well no but you still had the avengers and uh, whatever yeah Helverine, I was going to talk about too, but it's fine. So last week, I guess the only thing I want to talk about last week, and I'm sure you read it, was Rook S- Exodus 2. I haven't um, read that one yet. Oh, no. you haven't read it. Okay, so... Uh, I was waiting. I get my DCBS order, and I was waiting on those ones. Okay, so we get the kind of the full introduction of Direwolf. So she's another one of the Wardens. We find out that she's kind of the originator of them. Like, she's the one who actually trains them before they get to, like, go out into the world. Um, mm. Before, like, the world went to shit, basically. <laughs> And she meets up with uh, Rook and they, they kind of have their back and forth. Like they had, there's like a, like a love thing there, or there was a love thing that they tried or they wanted to be, but it didn't happen. Okay. And then the continuation of what happened in number one, where a swine kind of gets destroyed and we find out who it's this like bear guy is like you you soar. Like, so Urza, it's like Urza a or something like that. Um, but it was a great, you know, it was a great issue. Like Fabex amazing. Like the arts killer, uh, and I'm just excited to see where it's going to actually go with this because, you know, I want to see more of these wardens kind of show up in the series and see, you know, are they going to get off the planet? Are they going to stay on the planet? Because the whole thing is like he wants to leave, like Rook wants to leave, but like Dire Wolf doesn't want to leave. She's like, I got to stay here. There's things going on. And I'm like, okay. So um, we'll see about that from so from last week. Yeah. Rook's Exodus. I'm looking um, forward to that. I like that whole that whole universe, man. The all ghost of machine stuff yeah yeah there's Red there's Co- a lot of good stuff in there yep um yeah i gotta talk about it ghost spider spider gwen number one um uh, i'll kind of the positives like i'm happy she's part of the 616 now so no more in this other world uh i like the art that's it's going on you get a good writer um this time around i feel like this is the first time that we've actually got a, a good writer for spider gwen it's been a while but my problem with spider gwen is she's <laughs> And I hope this is not like an ongoing thing with her, but you know, she, the first villain that she fights or gets towards the end of the issue is Craven, mm-hmm. and immediately she's like, "Oh, I had the Craven on my Earth." Like, I hope that's not like a 
like in every villain thing, right? Like, <laughs> oh, I had one of you on my planet, or I had one of you on my, you know, Earth, whatever, you know. So, um, but it does give a cool background that the TVA are involved. Don't really explain like why they're there, but so she gets she gets to come to the six one six. The TVA, oh, Obi's in it basically. That's her, like almost like a like a parole officer. That's literally yeah. what his job is. So yeah. she gets she uh, she's allowed to come to six one six, but his her whole thing is that she can't use her power. She can't be a superhero because there's so many superheroes, and just that they don't want to involve anything of what's going on. Like she wants to be able to live her life, but the TVA wants to make sure that she can do this without being a superhero. But of course, why would we have a title called Ghost Spider Spider Gwen if we're not going to have her being a hero, right? right. So, uh, not sure why, other than you know how she kind of got here, and that's always like between the ghost, the giant size ghost spider that ended, and God, what was the last one? Spider Smash, you know. Then that was another mini series. We don't really know what's going on yet. I'm sure it'll unload as the issues go on, and kind of more more will be unveiled with the TVA and her. Uh, another issue. Speaking of spider stuff, so Ultimate Spider-Man number five. Did you read that? Yeah. Okay, so this sure. issue is, it's funny because I actually went back and I realized that in the original Ultimate Spider-Man number five is when they introduced Harry Osborn or the Green Goblin at the time. Mm -hmm. This one, I like how it's kind of, it, it goes like months back and it kind of is yeah. like coming up to the present day and it's kind of seeing what Harry has been doing, like how he was introduced, you know, with his father dying and man, his father, the way his family died was crazy. Um yeah. And then it kind of goes into him taking over the Stark building and you finding out like why he has the suit and all this mm -hmm. stuff that's leading up to him meeting Peter. And you can almost see that tiptoeing line of like when he talks to Peter and he's like, Hey, did some hologram talk to you? You know, <laughs> like, did it, and, um, yeah, and you see some all other Spider-Man villains in there as well. So we'll, we'll kind of see what happens, but you know, it was a slow issue. But at the same time, it was a good issue, I feel like. Yeah, it gives a lot of backstory. Background. In fact, honestly, it almost feels like you've gotten more backstory on uh, Harry Osborn in this series so far than you have Peter, which, I mean, makes sense. There's not, mm -hmm. there's obviously not a lot of backstory to Peter since he just got the powers. Um, and everyone knows Peter Parker from like the million iterations of him. But oh, yeah, um, it's I, I'm enjoying it too. I'm really hoping Harry doesn't break bad. Like, I, like I just really hope they don't follow like old tropes, you know what I mean? And like, like you said, without giving it away, the, like the other character who showed up, like mm -hmm. I just don't. And I mean, that's kind of how the original Ultimate Universe was, right? Like it was like, hey, new origins for every character, but they were pretty much the same. <laughs> like there wasn't really like the characters were the bad guys were still bad guys, you know, and they ended up becoming bad guys. It was just like, how did they end up doing it? And what their motivations were maybe a little different. Um, I'd like to see something a little different, man. Like maybe they don't go bad. Maybe they go good because it's a different world and different things have happened. Motivations are different now. Um, mm -hmm. I'd like to see something different. I don't want to just see the same shit, you know, like, Oh, because then it's just, then it's just all it is is an else world's title. Right. Yeah. And so, it's the rehash from the ultimate yeah. universe, the, the yeah. old ultimate universe. So, right. So. Yeah, good issue overall. Um, and I guess last but not least, and it, it, it's going to be my pick of the week. And it's probably going to be as of right now, you know, we're in five months of the year. I think this is probably going to be at the end of the year when we do like our year in review. I really think currently this is my favorite uh, mini series, uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, The Return Number Four. Did you read it? Yes. No. Um, no. Okay. So um the you know again this is going to be spoilers so if you haven't read it or you know you're not so you know they have uh rita and zed had a daughter um when they had like their final battle with the power rangers and tommy used his power morpher to transfer her off world off the moon and she ends up growing up and you finding out that she's not trini's daughter she's actually rita's daughter basically so she kind of twists she kind of like spins it on the to the Power Rangers who are still left. Um, they end. She ends up trying to, you know, uh, resurrect her mom. She ends up res somehow uh, resurrecting Tommy. So Tommy actually gets saved, and for whatever reason, and I think because he's a putty, and they really don't explain it too much. But he's young Tommy, so he's not yeah. like the old. He's not like these other characters who are all older. Like it's been years, right? 
So um, he comes out of the, the morphing grid and fights this girl and basically kind of makes her go good at the end of the thing. But even though she's not really good because she kind of leaves, but tells her that it's because of me that you're alive, basically. Like, I saved you. Like, I saw you as a baby and I didn't want you to die. So I transferred you to Earth and that's why I died, basically. So um, any idea how, like, where it falls in, like, the continuity or is this kind of like a standalone little series? So it is definitely like a standalone series, but from what we've seen, you know, there's so many iterations of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. It kind of ends where, so um, you also do meet, um, and then there's another daughter, you meet Kimberly's daughter. So Kim mm -hmm. and Tommy had a daughter as well that they didn't, that the other Rangers didn't even know about. So she ends up taking the, uh, the yellow Power Ranger so she becomes like the yellow Power Ranger. You know, Kimberly is the pink. Tommy's the green. And then at the end, at the far end, once it's kind of all over, there's kind of like the Power Rangers kind of come back. So um, Kimberly's daughter takes the pink Ranger and then the red Ranger, uh, black, blue are still there. And then Tommy's also there as the green Ranger. Yeah. But at the end of it, and it kind of like doesn't end end. There's a part where the Rita's daughter, I forget her name. She shows up. And then all of a sudden someone talks to her and it's the white tiger zord ranger and she's like Ooh. oh who are you so i'm just like now it's like all right what's well, gonna happen right like <laughs> who who is this this is gonna set up a second series you know it leaves it open-ended no, of course I don't know. yeah it's and i and you know we we talked about it that power rangers is relaunching soon over the summer yeah. so i don't know if it's this era or the continuation of what's currently in the because, yeah, where are we in, like, Mighty Morphin? It's, like, one third in the 130s, I think. Somewhere uh, like that. 125, I think. Yeah, somewhere with the, yeah. with the dead 120, range. 120, 130 range, somewhere like that. Yeah, so that's my pick of the week is the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers 4. And nice. it, it's been just an absolute killer read. You know, uh, every month, um, Amy Jo Johnson, the original Pink Ranger, writing it, just she did a great job with this. And, you know, knowing the history and, you know, bringing back these classic characters and seeing all this stuff has been an awesome thing to just read month in and month out for these four issues so pick of the week mighty morphin power rangers the return number four so, so following that let's mm. talk real quick about the blood hunt books we only had two this week i didn't we read any it. so it's oh, you didn't you. Read any? i didn't yeah dude there's so there was so much that i had to catch up because of gotcha. last week not reading anything and then this week stuff so i mean we could talk about the i well i read i read real issue quick. two yeah we can, i just didn't read uh the black panther and what's the other one blood Hunt. Sense. Yeah, I didn't read those two, yeah. but I did read number two. So actually, Midnight Suns might be my pick of the week. Um, Ooh, okay. I actually I really enjoyed The Midnight Suns was awesome. I thought it was really cool. Um, I'm excited for it. Obviously, I'm a big Ghost Rider fan. And we, we're seeing in the Ghost Rider run right now, obviously, a lot of people know the Hood is the current possessor of the Spirit of Vengeance. So you see um, one of the characters, uh, oh gosh, what is her name? She was from the Blade series that just passed um man she's kind of a newer character i can't remember her name anyway she goes to recruit the midnight suns for like a to save blade uh is mm -hmm. what she's trying to do and so she goes to danny catch who still has the spirit of vengeance she goes to johnny blaze who's now back to which is perfect because it's like a la how midnight suns was back back in the midnight suns days where catch had the had the ghost rider and johnny blaze had a shotgun full of hellfire and uh they also go for like Victoria Montesi. And so uh, I thought it was really cool. Um, I love the way it was. It was like the way they're talking about it. There's also a kind of like a, no, I'm, I'm going to ruin it, whatever. There's kind of like a, not a twist, but Victoria Montesi or Montesi, however you say her name, is in possession and able to like control Lilith from back in the Midnight Suns days. Like she has mm. her as like, she's like using her to fight other like evil. So um, right now, the, the thought is we're going to go save Blade, but hey, you know what? We might just have to ice this dude out too. So um, I thought it was cool. I really enjoyed it. I, it felt like Midnight Suns from back, like the Midnight Suns era. I thought it was really cool. Um, so really enjoyed that. M might be my pick of the week. Um, and then you had Black Panther, which was cool. And that this is just not a continuation of his title, which to be honest, I'm not even sure if he has his own title right now. It's just Blood Hunt, Black, Pan Black Panther, number one, or Black Panther, Blood Hunt, number one. Um, well, like we saw in issue two that Black Panther has turned into a vampire of Blood Hunt. Yep. So he's 
Blade turned him. And it's kind of what you would expect, right? Like, so he's let loose. Blade sent him on a mission to do something to further his plans. And Black Panther's, oh, I don't want to bite anyone. And he's in Wakanda. Like, you know, I don't know. It's just like, I don't know, man. Like, sometimes I'm like, okay, cool. Like, I, this is exactly like I, what we were just talking about with the uh, Avengers Twilight. Like, if they're like, hey, so here's what we're going to do. Black Panther's going to turn, uh, Blade's going to turn Black Panther to a vampire. What do you think is going to happen? Oh, I bet you he ends up in Wakanda. And I bet you he tries to fight biting people like the just this the, the classic story of like mm. any hero who gets turned to a vampire why not do something different why not be like yo black panther's wild dude he's just biting everyone and killing dudes like that would be crazy um but i guess you can't do that to your heroes i don't know but there is it is kind of like a cool little war in terms of the vampire aspect of Black Panther, like warring with the Panther God Bast, who's like totally against it. Like, hey, like Bast is like, yo, don't bring those demon corruptions into Wakanda. And so there's going to be a little beef there between them, like moving forward. Shuri as well as, you know, kind of helping, but also they're all wary of him. So it was a good issue. But like I said, it's kind of what you would expect. But mm -hmm. still week two, so to speak, I, I think, I don't know. I guess we're going off of Blood Hunt, like main run, right? So like week two of Blood Hunt, still strong. Still strong in terms of the um, the tie-ins so far. I haven't been like let down. There's a couple that I'm not crazy about. But for the most part, week two, Marvel, here we go. Yeah, they've been doing go, a great. Week three, week through four, that's where, <laughs> that's where the wheels <laughs> fall off typically in these events. So Well, uh, I mean, let's real quick, let's talk about number two. So. You know, we the continuation, you get the blood coven, they're there, you know, yeah. they're fighting. Uh, who's ever left of the Avengers? We still got that, like, we get that small team of Hunter's Moon and Tiger in there, and yeah. then they got to drop in Miles. Got to drop in Miles. And you know, like, again, spoiler alert, but I feel like Miles always gets the, the shit end of the stick because he's the vampire. And in when they did that, that carnage, or the, well, the king in black, he became like, a yeah, symbiote, and he got that's all he was like, he was useless. Um, but he always the, comes out squeaky clean. Like I guarantee uh, yeah. you, there'll be no problem with Miles moving forward. Like oh, of course, he always but, comes out squeaky clean. So. Yeah, uh, I guess the follow up. So you know what we saw at the end of issue one with Doctor Strange. Now we see that he's kind of in his astral form. That's how he's kind of uh, you know alive with everybody. But yeah, man, the Avengers or what's left of the Avengers, you know, really take it to the Blood Covenant. And I really oh, yeah. like this team, man. They are totally the Black Order, but just vampires like there's yeah. some cool looking characters um and then you know i i guess man i guess brielle is gonna really be like there's something big with her obviously and yeah. it, it's just really you know it's really gonna come down you can tell and i read the blade run before this and uh you can tell this is all coming from that like mm -hmm. well, however blade is the way he is is it's from his situation in in the previous uh series he had and the, like the evil spirit he let loose yeah. So um, you can see the tie ins for sure. And they keep mentioning them also as well. They keep callbacking it. So, but yeah, week two, still good. Like I said, wheels usually fall off week three, four, and five on these events. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of good stuff this week and even last week. So, I mean, we could literally do a whole episode of, of just yeah. talking about all the, all these books that came out in the reads. But uh, let's kind of kick it out to some articles for the rest of the evening. Um, this one, and I feel like nobody's really talking about this and, you know, this is, I watched the trailer, uh, and I probably will try to go see the movie if I can. It's, if it's out here somewhere in Jersey and I know it, it should be because of the way these cinemas work. So this is over at firstshowing.net, uh, documentary about comic book creator, Frank Miller, American genius trailer just dropped. So, uh, it just dropped literally last week. Uh, it's opening soon. American genius this film originally premiered back in 2021 at the Rome film festival, but it was laid because of just laid low for the past couple of years. So um, Frank Miller, they kind of go through his whole thing and you get to see different versions of Frank Miller and you see so much, so many people are in there. Collaborators like Neil Adams, Robert Rodriguez, Jessica Alba, Jim Lee, Zack Snyder, Stan Lee, blah, blah, blah. So many people are in this. They talk about it. And the way they talk about Frank is just unbelievably amazing. Mm -hmm. And you really think about it. It's just for a legendary comic book artist and writer. And I know we, I say that, but he paved the way for a lot of people. 
And oh, I yeah. think if you're going to look at this stuff, like you're really going to see like what he did. Like they, there's a part in the trailer that I forget who it is, but they talk about him being on set and it was like, this is how it should be. I think I can't remember if it was like 300 or um, Sin City, maybe Sin, or Sin City. Yeah, I can't remember which one, but, you know, he was really involved with all that, you know, and the way, you know, you look at all that old stuff, right? And I think there's they talk briefly about the Marvel stuff. I'm sure they're going to get into like all the daredevil stuff but you know once he came out of marvel and he was able to do his own thing like again it was just it's so badass and i'm really hoping to see like a lot of the dark knight return stuff but um forthcoming it just got showed off it's uh june 6th or it's gonna be coming june 6th in new york at cinemas and then nationwide on june 10th um to and it also be available on video on demand after that so i don't know if did you get a you got a chance to check out the trailer yeah, yeah, that looked good, man. And, and I've never been like a massive, don't get me wrong. Like, I, I like Frank Miller, but I'm, I'm not like a person who's like, oh, Frank Miller, I got to read Frank Miller. Oh, of course. But I think it's, of course, he's like a huge name and a huge influence in the comic book. I mean, you could almost say he paved the way just in terms of like the adult aspect of comics, right? Like, mm -hmm. uh, Dark Knight, I mean, that alone, if he, if that was all he wrote, and that is all he contributed to the comic book community or like the comic book world. That's enough, to be honest. Um, he's just something else. And he looks like Freddy Krueger with that hat on, man. So yeah. yeah. It was pretty interesting. Even in the trailer, they he says it. And this is like this is crazy to think about this. Uh, that he was so popular that he didn't fall into that. Uh, I forget how he says it, but he's like, I, I didn't let it consume me. Because yeah. you know, like actors and actresses get like that. Like they just they get that love and affection from everybody, and then they just they become different people. And he, there's a part in this trailer that there's just like so many, there's all these people like waiting to meet him and stuff. And it's just, he didn't change. He was still the same person, you know, through all yeah. the years he, he did what he wanted to do. He didn't let it affect him. And yeah, I know like we, we bitch and complain. We, we see his covers now and they do look like shit. <laughs> truth. Like, let's be real. Um, but he did do, you know, he did pave the way for a lot of stuff that happened in the eighties to artists and writers now. You know, it doesn't matter who you are. You have read you. have There's no way that you've not read 300 or Dark Knight Returns or, you know, anything from. Dude, I love Daredevil Sin, Sin stuff. City. Yeah. Every Sin City thing was like one of my favorites. Yeah. Ronin. There's there's so much stuff that he's done. So um, I can't wait to actually check it out. Like I said, I, I'm hoping to go see it. It's cool that they have these movies because like um, Amazon Prime, they've done a few of these documentaries that you've gotten a chance to see. And, and I've watched them and I, it's cool to actually get like comic book stuff like there's not yeah. many documentaries out there for for comic book stuff so to, to have it as a single person mm -hmm. is it's got to be something pretty impressive and, and being at frank miller um i think everybody should go check it out so again uh nationwide starting on june the 10th and then sometime after that will be on video on demand so if you get a chance sometime hey, upcoming month yes side note on documentary and i'm not going to talk about it too much but you should i watched it yesterday you should check this out is there's a documentary on netflix about uh reading rainbow oh i it, think i've it, heard about with, this with like lavar burton did you watch reading rainbow as a kid at all i know of it i'm pretty sure i did it oh, just blocked it out of my memory but dude it's a badass documentary like i mean granted i loved reading rainbow as, as a kid growing up but like check out the documentary and like every dude lavar burton might be like one of the the best human beings on the like, he's just all right it's really good dude it's about an hour and a half long or something so anyone else listen to this if you're a reading rainbow fan like dude it got me in the feels like yeah certain things came up and like i was getting a little i'm getting a little teary-eyed and i mean obviously right. also same yesterday was a was a rough day let's just say that in general but then the nostalgia of reading rainbow but check that out reading rainbow on the uh documentary netflix. on netflix awesome so. yeah i'll have to i'll have to add it to my watch list of stuff that i won't watch for like two years so <laughs> uh let's kind of uh, let's kick it out of that and let's talk about some uh some marvel stuff so we have the upcoming movie um you have this art of the coal this yeah. uh you know deadpool wolverine uh we got a little bit of a little tie-in over the summer yeah so uh over at marvel.com article says wolverine and deadpool team up all summer long in weapon extraction so uh, Ryan North and Javier Garon's Weapon Extraction Saga runs across multiple Marvel comics this summer in special backup stories. So um, it's going to kick off in July's issue of Incredible Hulk number 14. And uh, it will be just a backup story at the end. Now, 
here's something that surprised me. And we'll talk about kind of what it's going to go into, but this is the biggest surprise. Because when I first read, when I first saw this and I heard about it, I was like, oh, great. So every issue is going to be $6.99. Marvel says, with no increase on the select issues pricing, the backup stories will give readers a dose of Wolverine Deadpool action at no extra charge. Which, if anyone knows Marvel, that is like, mm -hmm. bro, that's like two suns rising up in a day. Like, that's wild. Like, Marvel loves like extracting every penny they can. From yeah, me. penny but, pinching. Yeah. Yeah, dude. So... Anyway, this is the quick synopsis on how the story will go. Weapon extraction kicks off when a weary Wolverine runs into a clinging Deadpool and a favorite watering hole. From this humble beginning, they embark on an epic journey of non-friendship that will carry them across the multiverse, battling zombies and gun-wielding librarians, and of course, one another. So, like I said, this will be across uh, multiple titles, eight, eight Marvel titles during the summer as a warm-up for, obviously, Deadpool Wolverine movie coming out in the end of july so um should be cool should be fun i don't know if i will be tracking down every one of these side issues to read yeah yeah so let, let's talk about this so it's an incredible hulk 14 captain america 11 fantastic 422 ghost spider 3 which is very odd immortal thor 13 and then in august you have avengers 17 spectacular spider men number Oof. six and then it ends with x-men number two and it's just yeah. like X-Men is just going to get launched and you're already going to put this Deadpool extraction level in there. And it's like, oh, come on. I mean, why is it in Ghost Spider? You well, know? again, I agree. I, I agree. Yeah. Like, that's stupid. Yeah. But, you know, but that's a title that I already get. But all these other yeah. ones, I don't. So. Well, yeah. and I'm the, I'm the reverse. Like, so a lot of the titles I, I already collect, like Hulk, Thor. Yeah. Uh, but I don't, I'm not reading the current Avengers and obviously anything X-Men I'm picking up, but I will be picking up Ghost Spider. We'll be picking up Spectacular Spider-Man. Um, yeah, it's so it's such like a tough thing to do. It's like, do you... Cause the, so that's what they do. I mean, that's, that's what their hope is. They're like, oh, we won't raise the price. We'll just get these suckers to buy these other issues. Yeah, well, that's what it is too. It's like, well, you know, for you, know, for you and even I, you know, when, when something ends, like a run ends and we sell it, right? Yeah. It's like, this is something that you can't really buy and then sell it right because it's like oh well if i want to sell the whole weapon extraction do i buy like another copy of the book because if you're already collecting that series right. you yeah, buy yeah. a second book just so then when the series ends and you want to sell the series you at least still have a complete set and you don't have that missing gap of like yeah. whatever so i used to have that problem when i was like heavy into collecting like everything when i was buying yeah. every single thing and like let's say for example uh, oh gosh what was the I don't know. Uh, I'm trying to think of like a crossover. What was the Carnage storyline? Uh, King and Black, Carnage. King and Black, yes. So King and Black, where it like crossed over to multiple titles. And it also had, or like Blood Hunt, for example. Blood Hunt's a good one. So if I collected Blood Hunt, I would have collected everything. I would have collected the tie-ins. And I would have collected like the ongoings because I was already reading like Venom where it's already in. And I always had that problem. I was like, well, I'm not going to take the two issues out of Venom. So then I had to buy the extra. <laughs> Eventually realized this is a, a, untenable. I can't do this, dude. So, um, yep. yeah. it's, it happens, man. I know. It's like, do I really want to do all these titles? Because it's like something like for me, like being on the DC side, like the last thing that I did that was huge was like, uh, I mean, this is like going Dark back. Knight's Metal. Yeah, like the Dark Knight's Metal stuff. But even like anything that happens with Batman titles. You know, yeah. like they, they had a, you know, the thing with like Deathstroke that was like, it was a crossover with the Deathstroke, yeah, Robin, yeah, yeah. and Batman. What was that called? Um, I, remember what I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. It was like two issues in it. And it's like, I don't really collect those. But then it's also like, so now it's like I stick them just in the, in the Batman. Yeah. Version, they right? just go with the Batman. Yeah. Run. They go with the Batman, Batman stuff. Run. You know, like you, get a bonus. <laughs> you know, and the biggest thing, and I, and I, I, I talk about this on, on a, very rarely basis but like the biggest crossover was batman no man's land that went through all the bad titles there was like at least like eight of each of the bad titles but then it went into like young young justice it was in azrael for like 10 issues catwoman robin nightwing like all these titles and you and that's literally what i have like i have them in their section like yeah. it's it's all just in the whole no man's land saga and it's just like you could never then sell like the set of everything else you because you'd be like, I want to yeah. keep these because it's continuation of all these stories. That's you know? like blackest night or brightest day. And then, Oh uh, God. Yeah. Joker last laugh. Flash point stuff. Like everything, yeah. Dude. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So again, 
coming over the summer on the heels of Wolverine and Deadpool. Uh, we're going to have this weapon extraction. So yep. last but not least, let's talk some Star Wars stuff. Uh, this is a fun article. I love these. <laughs> So oh, great. All right. So this is uh, coming over from Variety.com, and there's actually going to be a follow-up article that's kind of like a side project of this. So Lucasfilm boss Kathleen Kennedy says, a lot of women in Star Wars struggle with fan attacks because of the fan base being so male-dominated. Now, two males on this podcast are going to talk about why <laughs> this is bullshit. So yeah. In a recent interview with the New York Times or the upcoming Star Wars series, The Acolyte, Lucasfilm's president Kathleen Kennedy said she is aware the women in the space franchise are often attacked online more than men because of the fan base being so male-dominated. Females, female stars like Daisy Ridley and Kelly Marie Tran, who played uh, Rose, um, certainly faced online harassment from toxic fans when the most recent Star Wars film trilogy was released. And now The Acolyte is already being attacked in certain corners of the fandom. <laughs> so... How do we want to approach this, Zach? Well, we let me talk before about start, this. let's be let me be fair here. Okay. So we'll be fair. There is, don't get me wrong, there are trolls out there, right? And so it's not easy to say, like, I don't think it's fair for her comment to be like, you know, oh, they're harassed. Like that is like there are people out there who are trolling, right? And just being like assholes to be assholes. Um and then there's people who are just upset because of, you know, which I'm sure you're going to talk about as well, bad writing. And that's the real core of the problem. Yeah. Um, but I also think something else that's very, it's unfair to kind of like say this and be like, oh, well, yeah, like now the fandom is all men and no one complained about the original trilogy and stuff like that. Well, first off, we didn't have social media. Like social media is like a whole other animal, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone has a voice now. Everyone believes they have a voice in the, uh, so now it's like, it's a different world. It's a different world. And that's, and I'm sorry, Kathleen Kennedy. I'm sorry to every celebrity and stuff. That's not to say you deserve to be, you know, hated on and stuff like that. But that is unfortunately an aspect of your job now, because that's the world we live in. That's just the truth. Like you're in the public, the public's going to speak on you. That's all there is to it. Um, so before I kind of get into my version, um, it was interesting cause it's like this got, in, this got dropped and then, um, over at the, uh, Kansas film festival, uh, George Lucas was given the honorary, uh, Palm d'Or and in an interview, he goes, addresses the, the criticism of female characters being questioned. And his quote is, who do you think the heroes are in these stories? Yeah. Who do you think Princess Leia was? She's the head of the rebellion. She's the one that's taking this young kid who doesn't know anything. And this um, bosterous, I know it ever, I know everything guy who can't do anything and trying to save the rebellion with these clowns. And it's the same thing with Queen Amidala. Mm hmm. And it's the truth. He goes, you yeah. can't just put you can't just put a woman in pants and expect them to be a hero. They wear dresses. They can wear whatever they want. It's their brains and their ability to think and plan and be logical. That's what a hero is. And it's the truth because I have no problems as a you know, when I was younger and watched Star Wars. Yeah, like Princess Leia, like I didn't really think about it. Right. Queen Amidala, I was like a teenager, didn't really think about it too much. It's like they were cool characters because the story was written well. It was George Lucas. Dave Filoni comes in and, and we're going to also talk about comic books too, but Dave Filoni comes in, creates characters like Ahsoka Tano, uh, Sabine Wren, uh, Bo-Katan, like, and they're strong characters, but they're female characters. You know, they, there's all, there's still that thing. And then even in the comics, I mean, even in the nineties, like who do you think like Naomi Sunrider is from like the dark horse days and like Mara Jade, like mm -hmm. those are strong characters and people love them. Those are cult characters that people love. So the fact that you have this blows my mind because it's like, it is the truth. Shit. Rogue one is still one of my favorite movies. Like oh, Jin yeah. Urso no one a, complains about Jin Urso. No yeah. one, but she's, you know, she was somebody, you know why she got, she has pants. She put her pants on, you know, and she was like a nobody. And it's like, wait, wait a second. No backlash came on her. Like she has her own movie. She's not a Jedi. It's just about the writing. It's just the way yeah. that it was force fed to and it's it, pandering. Again, like yeah. you said, it's pandering. They they did it to check boxes and they did it to prove points. And Kathleen Kennedy even goes on in like the later in the in the article. Maybe it's not this one, it's maybe it's a different article I read, where she talks about like she came in with an agenda. And like I don't disagree that there does need to be some representation, right? Like, hey, we want 
young women to also see things and you want to see yourself in this. But you came in with an agenda and you you did it. And did you not think that was going to like rub people the wrong way? And not only did you just do it once, you did it multiple times and you just continue to do it. And yeah. then you get mad when people are upset about it. Like like you said, George Lucas. He didn't say like, hey, you know what? I need girls to like focus on. uh, I really want girls to see themselves in Princess Leia. No, he just wrote a good story with a good character and good writing. Yeah. And it it happened. Yeah. It's still, and this always goes back to, you know, you think about the heroes and, you know, female leads. Like they, they always complain about this in movies. Yo, shit, like Sigourney Weaver in Aliens is still like the OG, right? Like she's like her and like Leia are like the OG, like late 70s main characters that like people like in sarah connor sarah connor oh yeah and sarah connor in like the 80s sarah, too, you, know, yeah. you know that uh, yeah it's just it's just wild that you I, I agree with you like and i get yeah there's the agenda thing like it's fine like you want to introduce a female jedi do it but don't make it force fed and don't make it yeah there is an agenda that i'm trying to do if you just created and wrote a good story and you had this female character like dave filoni created ahsoka and yeah, people didn't like her in the beginning of the movie. They were like, oh, a female Jedi. But then once the series came out and you were like, wow, she actually has a story. She has a background because she's surrounded by other characters, strong characters. She became a strong character. And that's mm-hmm. what people loved about her and still love about her. Same thing with anybody. Sabine, uh, Bo-Katan, um, shit, who's the female uh, bounty hunter? Uh, Fen, right? Oh, yeah. Like they're all the same. Like they're cool characters. They're Asajj, females. Asajj yeah. Ventress. Yeah. Same thing. There's there's so many female characters that are introduced that people love and have no problems with. It is really this live action version of these female characters that we get this confrontation that there are this male dominated thing. Yeah. Well, so if there is the male dominated thing, continue to do the stories like they were. But again, create characters and put them in strong roles. Don't put the females in the strong roles and expect people to love them. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it, it's wild, dude. It's just, I mean, like Rose. Okay. Like I'm not even saying her back, like the way she started out in last Jedi, like it was a, a, a pretty good backstory, right? Like, I mean, as she's a rebel, a rebel soldier who loses her sister, like that's a, that's a, that's a very good, strong, like storyline and we got to follow her and how her like I like that like you want to see the little guys and these kind of things like it's not always it can't always be about the sword wielding magic Jedi guy you know it, it, you want to see the regular dude or girl or whoever and how they operate and so it was good but there was an agenda with it and they were trying to push it and her story just her character never progressed and didn't get stronger and like you said they didn't surround her like Finn was a horrible character. Horrible. Like, they never made him a good character. And so then you put him with Rose, and you have two weak characters, like you said, as opposed to Ahsoka, who's with strong characters, who made her stronger. It just was a recipe for disaster. And then, and then obviously, you know, she definitely, the actress, did got hate she didn't deserve, which is horrible. And, like, Justin and I both agree, I'm sure, that that toxicity is, like, unacceptable. But... To then claim, though, that anyone who doesn't like what you wrote is toxic or it's just absurd. Like we're getting to a point where you can't critique anything anymore. And if you do, you're a bully or you're toxic or and then it's beginning. If you happen to be a man or God forbid, a white man, uh, like, no, no opinion, dude. You get no opinion. Yeah. yeah. So um, I don't know, man. Kathleen Kennedy, she needs to move on. Yeah, she did. They they really need to get rid of her. And. Yeah, and like uh, George Lucas said, you know, he he felt like Star Wars was over when he sold it. Like it was oh, no yeah. longer his thing. You know, they they kind of wanted to expand so much, and it's fine to expand. And but man, there was they dropped this thing today on YouTube, and I can't remember if I sent it in a bunch of the chats, but it's like called the Chosen One, and it's literally it's all about like Anakin Skywalker, and then towards the end, it's like with Luke and Leia, and it's just crazy to think like that six six films and everything that happens in those six movies you know, and still like Clone Wars and like Rogue One and Obi-Wan and all that's like Rebels. There's just so much stuff that's like, it's good, right? Like, even though you know kind of what the outcome is, but even like the past stuff, like, or, you know, the future stuff, what we have with like Kylo Ren and, and Rey and all them. The problem was like every movie, the first movie was just a rehash of A New Hope. 
yeah. and then just the writers just couldn't get it and then you have all these different directors so it's just it's just like changing yeah. the guard it's like oh it's like tossing the baton to the next person because there's no coherent stories yeah. with the you know you know you're not following with it you're not keeping with these same directors who are like i think you should kind of go with this it's just like oh here's a new director here we we're going to talk about this in this movie and obviously ryan johnson just completely ruined the last jedi that's why there's a there's a big problem with you know the old fan base to the new fan base like i know there's always like oh well new fan base they love ray you know the young girls they love ray and listen i don't know man i i can barely watch those movies to be honest it's so tough to watch them. Any of them. I think it I think it says something too as well that everything that comes out currently, Star Wars wise, is all still tied to the original trilogy. In some way or form, it's all still tied to the original trilogy. It says something, it should tell you that they're not putting out any material that's tied to the sequel trilogy by any means. There hasn't been anything. So everything still is tied to the Skywalkers and that 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 era and that period of time, because that's strong because it's good, strong storytelling. And it is a very strong like basis of things you can branch out to and the stories you can tell are successful. Now, I mean, obviously there's a, people are going to disagree on whether they like to soak or whether they dislike the Mandalorian or Obi-Wan and whatnot. But um, I think it all pretty much is evident. Like you said, the sequel trilogy is not well received. Yeah. Uh, Even comics. Now we, when high Republic was announced, you have, the main character, Keith Trennis, female, like black yeah. character. I, I like her. Avar Chris, Avar strong Chris, character. Yeah. Um, you got Lola on like the Star Wars Adventures Volume One. Like nobody really complained too much because you had Kevin Scott writing it, like you, you Charles yeah. Soule writing stuff. Like that's what it is. Like if you have a good writer, like yeah. you're gonna solve all problems. Gonna, yeah, it's, exactly. It's not that hard. <laughs> Weird. Who knew? <laughs> um but yeah so that's that for the star wars stuff had yeah. to, had to end on the star Wars. i just was like i can't i gotta talk about this on the podcast so um so that's it season four episode 22 um of course make sure you follow us on all of our uh all of our platforms uh mm -hmm. check us out upcoming june is gonna be a big month we have a lot of guests um next week it's planned hopefully it still happens we're gonna have mitch from terrific on the promoter of terrific on is gonna come on you know, I say that now he has the link. I've, I've, I've talked to him. I'm excited to have him on to talk about terrific con for the people that never been there. And we get to kind of hear the backstory on terrific con. And you, you know, we talk about it every week, right? We, we got a variant. It's coming out. It's got approved. Um, we are not talking about it until literally the week prior, but things are in motion. Um, I don't know. I really don't have anything else. I got a what not sale to do, man. Yeah. yeah um, once again, Shout out to the family and friends, all of you who's listening and everyone in the community who knew TiVo, Tim, Tim Vo. Um, mm. Shout out to his family. Our prayers and love are with you. And uh, yes. damn, choking up a little bit. We're going to miss you, man. Yeah, it's it's, it's going to be really weird. Um, there's some chats. I mean, still on my phone. My phone's been blowing up ever since yeah. the post. And uh, it looks like we pr we're we trying to do something on Lord's, on Lord's YouTube channel like very, very yeah. soon. So, you know, just continue to follow the Lord's channel and, uh, you know, something will happen over there with you know, old Lord's, current Lord's. And so many people have also reached out saying that they want to, you know, come on as well. So it, it's going to be a huge tribute thing. So, um, you know, Tim, you're always in our thoughts and shit. When I mean, you literally said it earlier, like if it wasn't for him, there would be no Comic Con podcast. So, yeah, um, we're gonna end on that. So, uh, no, peace let's, out, end on, let's, let's end on one other thing, man. Keep, Keep digging, digging in, the in them long boxes. Yeah. Later, guys.